Hi friends, happy Sunday. I'm here to open up the vlog for the week. It's Sunday, so that's always football day in our house. We only have three games left of the football season, so two games today and then the Super Bowl, so that's a little disappointing. We love we love football here. Thought I would pop out to the library. I think they open at noon. So I thought in the meantime, while my hair is drying, I thought I would do some reading sprints, open up the vlog. I am trying to finish up Death by Dumpling here, which is by Vivian Chen. This was my book for the buzzword challenge this month, which was death. So I need to get this done before the before the end of January. So I thought I would do some reading sprints today before the library opens. I have some books to drop off. Like I said, I have a few to pick up for my reading plans this week. So I'll check back in with you after I get some reading done. pages of this A Death by Dumpling. I am on page 203. I don't know if I'm loving this. I'm kind of disappointed a little bit. <laughs> I was really hoping this was going to be a little bit better. I think that what it is is the, the characters fall pretty flat for me. I don't know. So this is about a girl that returns home to work in her family's restaurant after she loses her job. She has a bad breakup. She comes home to work in the restaurant. Things are going okay. She has no love life to speak of and her Asian mother is very disappointed that she is not dating. There is a death that occurs pretty early on in the book. The property owner for the plaza where her family's restaurant is in, he dies after ingesting some dumplings that she delivered to him from her restaurant. He was deathly allergic to shellfish and it contained shrimp. And so, of course, she comes into question as to one of the suspects. Why would she have wanted him dead? Also, another suspect is the cook in her family's restaurant. But it seems like there's a lot of secrets that are going on in this particular property. So I don't know. I mean, it just feels a little flat to me. She She's investigating, but she doesn't seem like she's really, truly a suspect. So I'm not really sure for her mot what her motivation is for doing all of this investigating. She seems more nosy and irritating, <laughs> I guess, at this point. And a lot of the other characters feel really flat too. So I have my own ideas of what's going on, but and it's kind of long for a cozy, honestly. It is 300 and some pages. I'm further than the halfway mark. I'm going to finish this one. But it's interesting. I was really, really excited for this series. My library has the rest of it. They didn't have this first one, so I ended up buying it, which I find is weird. So I don't know. I'm hoping I'll give it a high enough rating that I'll continue the series, but more to come. I'll check back in with you guys later. Okay, so I'm headed on my way to the library. I am taking back this Jody Taylor, A Second Chance. This was really good. Excited to talk about that in my vlog. My husband read the second Karen Slaughter, Will Trent. I'm going to take that back. Finished Finley Donovan is Killing It. And this one I could not. This is a DNF. So this is Mary Kubica, lo local woman missing. I could not get into this. I could not get into the writing style for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and DNF it and return it to the library. Check back in with you when I grab my books. Okay, so I just grabbed my books. The first one I got is The Dead Romantics by Ashley. Is it posting? So that's going to be for an upcoming vlog. I'm super excited about that. I'll work into a Valentine's Day vlog. A Crafter Knits a Clue from Holly Quinn. And Dial A for Aunties. I'm hearing this talked about a lot. So I'm super excited. The library is super crowded, so let's get going. Home from the library. I'm going to pick up where I left off reading this. We have the football game starting in a couple of hours. So I want to go ahead and read more of this. I'm really hoping to get this done today. I don't know. Like I said, it's it's tough going because I'm not, I don't know, I'm not connecting with this book at this point. So I'll check in with you guys later. Good morning.
morning. Didn't give you an update last night. I did finish Death by Dumpling. I will say this one really fell flat for me, unfortunately. And if I didn't know that there were other books by this author in the series at my local library, I would not pick up another one. I really felt like the characters were one dimensional and it almost felt, and I hate to say it this way, it almost felt a little bit robotic in terms of how it was written, almost like you could put in the formula for a successful cozy and then spit out the book. I don't know. It would have been so much more rich and added depth if we had more conversations about the characters, the relationships, even get to know them on a deeper level talk about the restaurant and the workings of the restaurant, talk about the food. There are just so many things that were missed that I felt like could have added to this mystery. It just felt, like I said, like it was, there was a formula, you're gonna do this, this, and this, and this is gonna spit out a cozy. I would say that the ending wasn't overly surprising, and in most cozies they're not typically. I mean, sometimes I'm surprised and I'm like, oh, I didn't see that one coming. I would give this a 2.5 stars. That's probably being a little bit generous and I'm being generous because this is the first, I think it's the first book by this author, at least in this series for sure. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to read the next one, but I will say that if I get, you know, 50 pages in and it's the same type of story and, and it hasn't developed any of the characters at all, I'm going to go ahead and DNF and just cross this series off my list. Like I said, really, really disappointed. I think it could have been shorter. So for 320 some pages, I didn't really feel like I knew the characters that much. I didn't really feel like I had a connection to them. And there were just a lot of missed opportunities to get to know everybody. And that's what cozies do. I mean, you tend to get to know the characters really well. So you feel like you have a connection with them over time. And that's what always draws me back to cozies. Two and a half stars, not great. I wanna show you what I grabbed from the library and talk about what my plans are for my TBR for the rest of this week. I am participating along with Books and Lala's buzz, buzzwords, if I could say it, buzzwords of the month. And for this month, she picked verbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and participate this first week in the challenge this week for the month. I'll see if I can incorporate other verbs in some of my plans for my upcoming TBRs for the following weeks. But this week worked out really well for me to be able to do that. And so I have four books here that I'm going to try to get done this week. A couple of these books, well, three of these books from the library. One is on my TBR list for 2023. So I'm happy to be able to hopefully cross that off my list this week. They are Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. So this is a thriller, a an apartment babysitter, apartment sitter, takes a job in, in Manhattan and... One of her fellow apartment sitters goes missing. She starts suspecting things are not as they seem. It's a thriller. I'm excited. I have never tried Riley Sager's work before or read any books by him. So yeah, I'm excited to try this one. The next one I picked up from the library, these last three, Dial A for aunties. Here, this gives me Finley Donovan vibes just looking at the cover. There's a death, an accidental killing on a blind date. Hi, Jinx and Sue. I am excited to try this. I know a lot of people have talked about this series. The next book works into my plans for an upcoming TBR, so I wanted to definitely give this one a try to see if I'm going to want to read that one for that TBR or not. So we will see. I grabbed this next one just by sight at the library, was looking for some verbs. This fit right in. It's a cozy. A crafter knits a clue. This seems to follow the typical trope of our main character that returns home after some kind of heartbreaking incident, whether it's job loss, breakup, that type of thing. This one, she is returning home after the death of her best friend and she takes over her craft store. I don't know if she buys it out obviously I haven't started reading this. So when I saw this and I saw that the library had a few other ones in this series, I thought, great, I will go ahead and grab this, give it a try. And the fourth book that I'm going to try to read for this week is MC Beaton, There Goes the Bride. It's an Agatha Raisin mystery. I love these or I have loved these in the past. So I'm returning to this series. I don't know if I'm about halfway done. I mean, back when I stopped 
took a break from Cozy's for a while. I think that there was only there was only a couple that I had missed and now it's been a few years. So I am excited to jump back in. I want to see if this series still checks all the boxes for me and I still love it. Agatha Raisin is a PR executive that retires to the English countryside. She buys a small cottage, becomes quickly bored. <laughs> Hijinks ensue. She just gets into all kinds of trouble. She's grumpy, but she is lovable. She wants people to love her and she wants to fit in and she just doesn't. And so it's her lovable way of stumbling across mysteries, solving them, getting in people's way. I don't know. She is very, she, she makes me laugh. Maybe not, you know, roll on the floor laughing, but definitely has me chuckling over some of her misadventures and I'm excited to try this one in the series and see if it's something that I want to continue. The first book that I'm going to tackle for the challenge this week is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I'm excited to jump into a thriller. I need something that will keep my attention a little bit more, hopefully after that cozy. I don't know. I am kind of a mood reader. I do tend to read more than four books in a week. So I feel like if there's something that I'm really, really wanting to read, for this week, I will slide it in. <laughs> and if I don't finish all of these, that's fine. The challenge, the buzzword challenge is basically to do one word for the month. So I'm fine with that. But I just thought these would be fun to read for this week. And if something else is calling my name, I will go ahead and grab that. I'll check back in with you when I read some of this book. I finished it in one sitting. This was fantastic. So I guessed what was going on pretty early in the book. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. Look at like, what is this? <laughs> I think there's some binding issue. What is that going on? But anyway, I figured out what was going on pretty early in the book, or at least I guessed what was going on. And I was pretty proud of myself for guessing. <laughs> so early, I don't know. How do you guys rate that? If you figure out what's happening in the book early, do you downgrade it or does that increase your enjoyment for the book? It actually, I like it when I'm right. <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of like, woo, I got it. But yeah, there were just a few clues that I thought really kind of pointed out what was going on. So again, this is our apartment sitter, Jules in a Manhattan apartment building. And she notices that people go missing, young people like herself, the apartment sitters. It was my dog that barks all of the time. He's enjoying barking at nothing today. I don't know what's happening, but yeah, he'll probably go on the sofa. Yeah, you can see him a little bit. Anyway, apartment sitters start to go missing and she is wondering what's going on. The building has a sinister history and she's wondering, okay, <laughs> is it haunted? Should I get out of here? But she can't really afford to leave. It's a really good gig for her. And so she decides to dig around and find out what's going on. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I know other books by Riley Sager aren't as well reviewed. I didn't read any spoilers or any reviews about this, but I did notice that it was kind of mixed bag in terms of what people rated this one. But I'm gonna go ahead and give this a four star because, or give it four stars, because I did figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if I couldn't have figured it out and it really had me guessing, I probably would have given it a five star. I will definitely pick up another Riley Sager novel. I'm excited to try another one. I will look for some highly reviewed ones and see what I think. But let me know in the comment section down below if you have one that you recommend that I read. I have decided since I finished Locked Every Door by Riley Sager, I'm going to go ahead and read the mc beaten there goes a bride this will be my next book to tackle this week i'll be back when i have finished a bit of the book good morning and happy tuesday just checking in on my progress with there goes the bride by mc beaten i'm i'm about 200 pages in i was editing a video last night and was watching some booktubers so I didn't finish this like I had hoped, but I am reminded of why I really liked this series back in the day. I really love Agatha. She is just, she's hilarious actually, and she gets herself in all kinds of different situations where she's got to get herself out of. So in this case, the fiance of her ex-husband is killed right before their wedding. And of course, she is the suspect, <laughs> the number one suspect. And so all kinds of different hijinks occur. There are other things that happen in this book, so I'm really enjoying it. 
Again, I'm reminded of why I really love this series and I can't wait to finish it and check back in with you. We're back and I have finished the There Goes the Bride by MC Beaton. I would say this was pretty good, although it was disjointed at the end. There was a lot of things going on and I felt like it almost like it was as the author was trying to get in a certain number of pages, a page count. I thought there were a lot of things that didn't really need to get added in and were just kind of afterthoughts. It's kind of strange. A lot of disjointedness going on at the ending. But our main character, Agatha, gets up to a lot of different bad situations. She's always putting herself in the most precarious situations. All of her friends need to come to her rescue, which is a lot of fun because she, she second guesses herself a lot. And in this book, she did that. She's starting to get older. She's says middle age. The photographers would rather take pictures of her cute young assistant than her. And I think that it starts to really grate on her. There is a moment in here that just made me laugh that she was thinking that she looked all cute. And when she came home, she realized her makeup was running and she found a couple of dark hairs sprouting from her lip. You know, and it, that just makes me laugh that, you know, the poor Agatha, I always think poor Agatha, just when she thinks she has everything together, she's fallen in love. She's got a great detective agency. She has a great group of friends. Something always goes wrong. And so, and the difficult situations that she puts herself into. Overall, I would say this was a three star for me. Again, I didn't really love the disjointedness of the ending. I will pick up another book in this series just because I have been reading this series for so many years. It does feel like catching up with old friends and I love all the characters in this series. That's what really makes this for me. But I don't know if this was the first book that I had read from this series or from this author. I don't know that I would pick up any more, to be honest. So I'm kind of disappointed in this and I'm giving it a three star for nostalgic sake. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday and I thought I'd take a moment and open up the vlog for the morning. I did not really get into another book last night. I was so tired. We I had so much going on yesterday at work. I'm in HR. Busy, busy day in HR yesterday, but I did start, I read a couple of pages, a couple few pages of Dial A for Aunties here. It just seems like a super cute, quirky novel, a little bit of a mystery, a lot of humor, family dynamics. I am super excited to continue reading this one today. I am planning on going to the library. My library has a couple of holds for me, which is always great for some upcoming vlogs. I'm excited to pick those up, drop a couple off. I may take you along depending on what we're doing this afternoon, but I will check back in later. Hi all, doing a quick check-in here. I've actually finished Dial A for Aunties. And I'm not sure if I am really loving this type or these tropes at this particular moment in time. I have really loved Janet Ivanovich's Stephanie Plum series in the past. I actually just read three of those back in December. And while I didn't find them hugely laugh out loud funny as I have in the past, or at least when I started the series many years ago, they were cute. And I think, again, going back to my nostalgia, I, I've said this in the past, where I've liked books for nostalgic sake more so than what it's offering to me at this particular point in time. So I think I keep picking up those based on the fact that I know the characters really well. I know what the pacing is going to be like. I'm, I'm kind of checking in on their lives to see if anything new is going on. <laughs> that kind of thing. But starting a new series... I'm not really sure if I'm looking for a new series in those tropes. I'm not really sure if I am because I don't find them as funny as I have in the past. I feel like I have to suspend a lot of disbelief going in <laughs> because if any of these things happen, any of the things going on in this particular book were happening to myself or anybody that I knew, we would all be arrested <laughs> immediately. <laughs> like we would not get away with the things that were happening in the books at that time. And I think it's hard for me, and I'm not saying it has to be totally realistic for me to love it. I don't know. It just seemed very, very silly and outlandish. And I, I'm not sure that I was in the mood for that at that particular moment. Did I appreciate the relationships between Medi, her mom, 
and or ma she says and her aunties yes absolutely i thought it was heartwarming loved those relationships and it was definitely a character driven story but there were a lot of s silly aspects to this particular case in the story the romance itself was a little fast and unbelievable at points but i think if you're looking for something super lighthearted and fun with a good heartwarming family dynamic to it i think this would be good i am going to pick up the second book in the series in an upcoming tbr where i'm going to give some books in a series a second chance to see if maybe they improve again basing it on the nostalgic factor checking in with some of the characters seeing if they grow and develop i think that would be fun to revisit them in the future I'm giving this a three star. It reminds me a lot of Finley Donovan. And I think if you really like Finley Donovan or Stephanie Plum, give this a try and see what you think. My last book in the TBR that I have planned for this week is A Crafter Knits a Clue by Holly Quinn. I've already started this. I am about 70 pages in. This is a cozy mystery set in Wisconsin where we have our main character, Sammy who returns home after, de after the death of her best friend to take over her craft store. She resells or she sells crafts that other people have made. Kind of it's a conglomeration of all of the different crafts that the talented people in her town have made. But a seeming rival, not direct rival of hers that owns a shop down the street from her is stabbed with a knitting needle. And of course, she is the one that stumbles on the body. She's worried that she's going to be the first and primary suspect for this death since she doesn't really have direct competition to her because they sell different things. This other, this rival of hers and the murder victim actually sells the yarn itself. That's some of the folks that sell items in her store. They purchase the, the yarn to knit into items that are now sold by Sammy. So they're not really in direct competition, but it's another retail storefront that is on that same block. And so when she's questioned by the police, they kind of frame it in the way of, well, you were a competitor of hers and were you jealous of her success? I like the writing style here. It definitely is a cozy mystery for sure. It follows all of it, you know, checks all of the boxes that you would have with a typical cozy mystery. I'm liking it so far. She's nosy of course she's poking her nose in it does seem plausible that yes she would ask some questions trying to clear her own name so so far i'm liking it we'll see how you know this turns out who the <laughs> who the murderer ends up being we'll see if this is a series that i'm going to continue but 70 pages in and i'm really liking it so far so my plan for today i didn't end up going to the library as i had hoped I'm going to, it's so cold. I was just not feeling it yesterday. So my plan is hopefully to go to the library. They got in another one of the books that I've had on hold. So that's good. That was, that was helpful that I waited a day. I'm going to return the books that I have obviously here and then pick up a few more that are in line with my upcoming TBRs for February. So I will check back in with you later. Giving an update on my final book for the week, for the prompt anyway, it is A Crafter Knits a Clue by Holly Quinn. I have finished the book and I have realized that I, you know, something was really nagging at me and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I figured out that I really don't care for this main character. It was really interesting. The mystery itself was pretty good. And some of the characters I liked, I liked the bakery owner in here. But I really found myself highly disliking this main character and I couldn't figure it out at first. But after a little while it became obvious she is just, she was just not a very likable character. She actually really snapped at the police detective quite a few times because I think she was attracted to him and she said that in the book several times. But it was kind of like her defense mechanism as far as pushing him away. And she was rude. <laughs> <laughs> she was so rude to him and like really pushy in terms of the mystery itself. And for me, that became unbelievable because if somebody was that rude to a police officer and was pushing their way into a mystery and meddling in their 
you know, they might be charged with obstruction. I don't know. It just seemed really implausible in terms of that. And her attitude just really, really kind of stunk, unfortunately. Most of the times in a cozy, the main character is somebody lovable. Yes, they're nosy. They're, they push their way into the mystery more often than not to clear their own name or to defend somebody that they love or keep their business or whatever the case might be. But for her, there wasn't a lot of motivation and it became more of the fact that she just was really nosy and was kind of rude to the people around her. So unfortunately, this would not be a series that I would pick up again. I did go online and check. There are only three books in this series, so don't think it did particularly well. And I can't find any other books written by this author unless she's writing under another pen name. So I'm kind of bummed. I was really liking this in the beginning. And I feel like the more the book went on and on, the more this character really kind of came into her own and not a really great, <laughs> and not in a great way. So unfortunately, I'm going to go ahead and give this a two star because it wasn't something that I would want to pick up again. Not going to be something that I'll give a second chance to. So because I had some extra time at the end of this week before I start my next week's prompt, I decided to delve into one of the books that I was waiting for at the library. I've put a few books on hold. I think I have maybe 10 at this point. They're trickling in here and there. So this came in along with Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. That will be my next book when I have some extra time or, you know, if the mood really strikes me and I want to read that. Like I've said, I am really a mood reader and I don't want to restrict what I'm reading just based on the prompts. The prompts are supposed to be fun for me to pick up some extra, some other books that maybe I wouldn't have tried, some new authors. But if something comes in from the library that I'm super excited to read and that I had on hold, I'm going to just slot that in. That's what happened with this one, The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. I devoured this and didn't have a chance to pick up the camera. I was not looking so great yesterday. On Fridays at work, a lot of times we have no camera Fridays, which is awesome. So I typically don't, you know, get myself all <laughs> makeup on and hair done. So yesterday was kind of one of those lazy type of days. And after work, I just pretty much devoured this, got up this morning and finished it. This was excellent. Much needed break after the cozy. This follows a vicar and her daughter. I thought at first because the vicar's name was Jack that it was a male. It was not. I was fooled <laughs> like a lot of people I'm sure in her line of work. They just assume like I did unfortunately like she is a he. But in any case she is a vicar that moves to this small town with her 15 year old daughter and weird things are happening there. We've had quite a few mysteries in this town over the years. This is the site of the Burning Girls, where two girls were martyred in the 1500s, hence the name the Burning Girls. And we have the previous vicar before Jack. He hung himself and two girls went missing 30 years ago. So there's a lot of history in this town. It's very, very creepy very atmospheric setting. You know, Jack starts seeing things out of the corner of her eye. Her daughter has some run-ins with some bullies in the town. It's very interesting how it all comes together. It was definitely very fast-paced. A lot of things to keep straight. <laughs> I guessed a couple of the things early on, but there's a lot to this story. So I think that even if you figure something out you're not going to understand well at least I wouldn't think that you would figure out the entire thing that is happening almost to the point where I could see myself rereading this book so that I can go back and see some of the breadcrumbs that are thrown along the way but yeah I really really enjoyed this one I'm really going between a 4 and a 4.5 for this one again I think part of it is because I guessed some of it I'm not sure so I'm trying to think about it and I sense that if I would read this again I might give it a five star just seeing how clever everything was that laid out I will definitely be picking up more from this author and it was a really good ride. Highly recommend. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the vlog for the week. So next week we have a Valentine's theme or words for Valentine's Day to start getting us in the mood, not that kind of mood, <laughs> but start to, you know, feel some love in the air. Think about Valentine's Day. 
We're getting closer to spring. So I thought we'd bring in some words that remind us of Valentine's Day. And one of the books that I'm gonna be reading, actually it's two books in one. There are two Lucy Stone Valentine's Day mysteries in one volume from Leslie Meyer. I've read quite a few of these in this series in the past. And when I saw that there were two books in one, I thought I would grab this at the local bookstore. I thought it was kind of fun. It's a Valentine murder and chocolate covered murder. Thought it would be a way to reintroduce myself to these characters so I can pick up in this series. Thought it would be fun also to read for Valentine's Day. Throw in a romance and another mystery in there and I'm sure I will find some time to read tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye everybody!